Hello YouTube, this is RV Tips for People with Physical Limitations, Episode 2, Holiday Edition. Hello YouTube, uh, welcome to our Holiday Edition. Uh, the thing we're going to be doing tonight and tomorrow is putting up a Christmas tree here in the Winnebago. Actually, I'm planning to put up two uh, here in the Winnebago. The first thing you want to do though before you do any of that is take measurements and figure out where you want to put uh, your tree at in your camper. There's lots more spaces than maybe you're thinking and here's some of them. And this is one of the spots I came up with in the camper where you could put a little tree. As you can see that's my doghouse uh, behind my heater there. And there's about a four and a half foot area where you could put, um, oh there's my kitty cat. Hello Taylor. That's my sweet. Anyway, you could put a little tree there. And actually, if I didn't have one of my heaters right there, that's a good little spot uh, right there, too, next to the uh, behind the bathroom door, which is right there. In that corner, there's a, a good little spot. If you have a little tree, uh, you could put one there, too. Okay, this is one of the more unorthodox spots where I might think of going ahead and putting a Christmas tree. Um, I'm only one person in this camper, uh, and... It's because of that, I don't need both of my bench seats, so I just went ahead and took the cushions out. This is the, the little uh, fiber board, um, board there that's underneath the cushions, and it's flat and hard. And there's, an, again, about another four, four and a half feet there um, of space. So you could go ahead and put, put the tree there and actually even put uh, a pillow next to it or something and still use half of it. Uh, I don't really think I'm going to use this one, but a person could. Uh, maybe you want to in your camper or something like that. And also, uh, a person might go ahead and put the tree on the table. Okay, you'll have to pardon the mess on that part of my table. Uh, my hat and computer and stuff sitting there. But back here on the, on the corner, um, there's about, oh, maybe three feet of space between that and the cupboard up here. Uh, and you could put a little teeny tiny tree uh, in there if, if you wanted to. Um, that's another space you can use. I, again, I don't think I'm going to use that because I sit at the table with my computer and do editing and communicating with everybody and stuff like that. But you could in your camper maybe. Um, again, I'm one person in here so I can kind of put uh, stuff where maybe m people wouldn't do if they were a couple or a family living in there. But it's a place where maybe you could put one in your camper uh, and have a festive little tree right there. Well, let's see, where else could I find a spot to put a little tree here in the camper? Uh, maybe up here on top of the fridge. Um, there's about two feet of space right there. Uh, it's kind of a good out of the way spot, but again, not too tall. So that's a, something to consider. Uh, that's a maybe on that one. Uh, back here in the back of the camper in front of my bed here, there's kind of a spot there on the, I guess you'd call it a headboard or whatever. Um, maybe in that corner or here where I put my computer when I watch movies um, that might be a good spot or there's kind of a little nook in front of my closet here you can see my Tasmanian devil pajamas there uh, there's a little nook and you might be thinking well Jason that is right in front of your furnace discharge and you'd be right, except for I don't use my forced air furnace. I use other other heating methods. Um, so these are pretty much all the spaces uh, that I might be able to put a little Christmas tree. And we'll just have to see which one is the best. Um, okay, so after taking a good look around here at all the different possible spots... I've decided I'm going to go ahead and put a small tree in the four foot six area uh, on my uh, engine compartment up there on what's called the doghouse between the two front seats. Uh, there's a nice spot and also I'm going to put a very small one uh, back uh, on my headboard in the back, uh, both for demonstration purposes of two different sized trees and I like Christmas decorations. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and I'm going to head down to the tree lot and see what I can scare up. Okay, YouTube, here we are back at the camper. I uh, went into town today um, and went tree shopping after we did our, our measurements and our look-see in the camper to see uh, um, where it could fit a tree. Uh, so after getting measurements and, and looking at stuff, I went into town with the basic size in mind. 
uh, somewhere a, a little bit over four feet um, or smaller is kind of what I was looking for. So this is what I came up with. And here we go. Um, the bigger one there I got at the tree lot. And a lot of times these smaller trees, um, you can pick them up uh, a little bit cheaper even at the tree lots. Most people don't want a four foot Christmas tree. Uh, they usually want one my height. They're a little higher to fill up their living room and have plenty of room under it for presents. So there's usually quite a few of these. And this one right here is the one from the tree lot. Now this one is an elf tree uh, that I picked up at City Market slash King Supers slash Kroger. And it's even more tiny. And I'm going to put it in one of the other spots that I found inside the camper. And you might be thinking, well, Jason, this is nuts to be going ahead and putting two trees in your tiny 21-foot uh, camper here. Um, and normally maybe it would be, but it's just me uh, in this camper, and I won't be stepping on anybody's toes or taking up too much space. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and get two. Now, you might be thinking, what does this have to do at all with people with physical limitations? And I'll tell you, as people with some physical limitations knew, Smaller is better, and both of these trees are, are very small, very easy to move, even uh, as I point, you can kind of see there. Even, even with somebody with some problems in their arms or their hands, or some arthritis, or maybe you have a bad back, these little tiny trees, you can kind of see the tire next to them and get an idea of how tiny they are. They're very easy to move around, and easy to put around in your camper. And I know you might be thinking about messes and stuff like that that go along with having a live tree with water in the, in the holders and this, that, and the other. And I will actually address that, and it's not anything you need to worry about. In fact, it's a real easy, easy way to deal with that when you want to move your camper around, even if you want to move every day. It's still fine, and I will show you how to do that as soon as we get these uh, gorgeous little trees installed in the camper. Okay, YouTube, I got my measurement for my little tree right here that's going to go on the doghouse, I've decided. And it's not quite short enough, so I need to cut a little bit off of it. And I used to use a saw like this hand saw right here. And it was really hard and took a long time and took a lot of elbow grease. That didn't used to matter, but now that I have some limitations in my arms um, and in my shoulders, I decided to switch to using this reciprocal saw here. Um, a lot of people call it a sawzall. I have a blade on it that's long and uh, actually three weeks ago or so I wouldn't even be able to use it because one of my arms was in a sling but I'm healed up enough now to go ahead and use it. If, if you are physically limited and can't use a reciprocating saw or don't have one, a lot of times at the tree lot they will go ahead and saw um, the bottom off for you to fit whatever your measurements are. If you take the measurements before you go, they're usually happy to go ahead and do that. Or if you have a friend or a relative that can come over and help you, that might be really handy because it is, uh, you do not want to be using one of these hand saws. Uh, and there's my doggy there. Uh, anyway, let's get to work. I'm going to go ahead and go turn on the generator so we can run the reciprocating saw here. Um, I do have shore power right now over there but I just want to demonstrate how you could do it if you were actually in the forest or something you could go cut down your own tree with the reciprocating saw and use the generator um, to get it all ready to go inside your camper and here to help us with the tree is my little kitty Taylor uh, she's gonna help I actually got all the measurements down and we are ready to go um, I'm gonna hand you off to my helper you don't need to push the button again. just keep going and I'm going to grab the reciprocating saw and we already took our measurements uh, so we can get the tree the right height to fit into the camper. Um, first we're going to take a little bit off the stump. So that it'll fit in the space. And then we're going to take a couple of the lower branches off so it'll fit into the Christmas tree hold, uh, hold stand, I guess. As you can see, pretty easy going, low impact. Yeah, I think we about got it. Let me double check. Oh, no, there's one left here. 
got to watch the cord too. I'll go ahead and take it off. There we go. And I believe our Christmas tree holder should fit now. Let me grab it real quick and see if we can get it in there. Oh yeah, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up and take it inside. All right, everybody, we have to take a pause in the action there uh, due to the YouTube time restrictions. On my next video, we will start right where that one leaves off, so please go ahead and watch that. I'm going to upload it right after this one. Um, and you could also subscribe to my YouTube channel and see all my videos. And feel free to tell your friends and your friends' friends and all their friends. Um, anybody else you think might be able to get some good out of my videos, feel free to tell them too. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.